their places. The member for Dunkley has the call. Thank you, Speaker, and uh, congratulations on recognising, as those on the coalition side do, that the uncertainty and the chaos and the uh, the suggestions of further changes in the area of superannuation is terrifying. Superannuation savers and those relying on their superannuation for their income. At a time when cost of living pressures loom large in the lives of every household in Australia, every small business, you've got people on fixed and on superannuation incomes that they've acquired through putting away savings by preparing for their retirement, seeing their costs going up and faced with greater uncertainty about what the future looks like for them. Financial insecurity is a concern. It's a concern for many Australians, but at this moment no greater concern than is it for those that are relying on their superannuation or planning for their future. If you were to characterise the Labor Party's approach to superannuation, it would be the tax gouge and to tinker greatly. That's what they do. They've looked at superannuation and thought, here is a cash cow. We will mess with it. We will play with it. We will describe it as being motivated by high ideals and will even try and generate more class warfare around retirement savings policy when really all it is about from start to finish is a cash gouge to try and prop up this failing budget that Labor has overseen. And this is on the back of the former Prime Minister. Who can forget? Who can forget that undertaking, that solemn promise, that explicit commitment that was made during the 2007 election campaign that Labor would not change the superannuation laws and, remember, not one jot, not one tittle? Well, haven't they failed? I thank the Parliamentary Library. I ask the Parliamentary Library what does not one jot, not one tittle mean as it relates to stability and superannuation. Look what came. Look what came. This is not one one jot, not one tittle. This is more than 50, more than 50 major policy announcements about change and about legislative adjustment that's happened on the back of this promise of not one jot, not one tittle. People want to know what a jot or a tittle looks like. Apparently, this is not one jot and not one tittle. This is at least 50 tittles and then some as they continue to tinker with superannuation, creating great uncertainty for all Australians. Now, what do we, what do we expect in the upcoming budget? Well, we've already seen a little bit of speculation from Labor trying on different ideas about how to paper over the enormous budget black hole they face. Even Labor luminaries have come out saying, please, please stop messing with superannuation. But let's think about all those Australian men and women that are wondering about their retirement, that are thinking about what will come next and are looking for some certainty, some stability, some predictability on something that is such a long-term investment as superannuation for those that are saving for it. Or something that is so significant for people that are de dependent on their superannuation to cover their cost in their living at this time. Now, what can we look for into the future? We know that Labor sees superannuation as a cash cow and it is viewed as a soft touch to, mic to paper over their budget mess. Let's look at some of the changes to date. They've limited the amount that people can save for their retirement by lowering the concessional contribution caps from $50,000 and $100,000 to twenty five. dollars What does that mean? That means a tax increase on voluntary contributions. That means for those Australians who lost everything under the recession we supposedly had to have, with maybe just a few years of their working life, to put aside money for their retirement. Here is another brick wall that they run into as they make choices about their own income and voluntarily commit it to a retirement not dependent on the taxpayer, but one that they can shape themselves through superannuation. Think about those small businesses, those small business people, and particularly in these recent and ongoing years when things have been extremely tough extremely tough. When are they going to put aside for their retirement? Yeah. Then when there's a good year, you might want to put some away for your retirement nesting. That's what the Howard government understood. That's what those in small business understood. That's what the men and women who didn't have a retirement nest egg understood when we had a higher level of contributions where you could get concess concessional tax treatment. Why? To encourage people to voluntarily put aside their own resources for their own retirement, to relieve the burden on the taxpayer into the future of income support pensions, where people could determine their own destiny and the financial platform from which they could plan with certainty for their future. But no, 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 Labor's taken that all away. 
and they're going to do it again. And they've done it as you've seen them mess with superannuation contributions. Let's not have any of this cant and, and concocted sort of outrage about the coalition and its work for low-income people and their superannuation. It was the coalition that introduced the, the co-contribution arrangements. It was Labor that cut them. And since the election of Labor, you've seen $3 billion taken out of low-income people in terms of co-contributions to support them as they build up for their own retirement. You've seen the taxation rates go up for people earning above $300,000 a year. You've seen this extreme crackdown on people who might have just got outside some of these parameters with these tax penalties that are absolutely horrendous. They are horrendous. In my own area, someone running a not-for-profit organisation had their accountant plan to make sure they could make the contributions up to the $25,000. They waited till the end of the financial year to see if they had the capacity to do that. When they were able to settle their own financial circumstances, they then put the contribution in up to that level. But what happens? Your capacity to make those contributions might be based on accrual accounting concepts. But the calculation in the tax office, it's based on cash. So even if it relates to a financial year, say 2011-2012, and you happen to pay it on the 7th of July, it actually goes into the subsequent year. Now, these poor people are paying enormous amounts of penalties for trying to provide for their own retirement. Their labour changes combined have added $8 billion of tax revenue to their budget. And this is what they're looking at again to have a crack. Think about those people looking for certainty. Think about the promises that have been given before not to mess with superannuation. The not one jot, not one tittle undertaking from Prime Minister Rudd. Prime Minister Gillard's undertakings not to disadvantage people with the way in which superannuation was played with, the reassurances that co-contributions wouldn't be messed with. All of that has proven to be completely false. So when the Prime Minister, after trying on this, this potential tax gouge of taxing people over 60 as they're receiving their superannuation, she tried that on and that got leaked out, it got briefed out, everyone was told to talk about it just to see what the reaction was. Well, there was outrage and that got dropped. But have we heard any other assurances about not messing with other aspects of superannuation? Not at all. I say to the Australian public, get on to your Labor member of parliament. You might not know who they are because they might be hiding from you, but get on to them and say, don't mess with my super. This is something that's important. It's something that we've seen change time and time again. That's what, what not one dot, what not one tittle looks like. 50 changes. We've got more adverse changes on the way as Labor looks to superannuation, particularly self-managed superannuation funds, as the soft touch, the cash cow, to paper over its inability to manage its budget. And as we all remember, as the Prime Minister said, if you can't manage your budget, you can't manage the economy. And sadly, the cost of that is coming right on top of ordinary men and women in Australia. Now, you look through what's been going on with these changes. We, we, we in the coalition years established more generous contribution caps so that people could put that nest egg aside, even if they had only a very narrow window, window of working life to provide for their own retirement, particularly significant particularly significant for mature age workers that might not have had the benefit of a, a lifetime of work and superannuation contributions, particularly significant for a small business owner. Now, we also tried to put in place, and we did put in place, this co-contribution scheme for low to middle income earners where they are encouraged to save towards their retirement. They would be rewarded for making those decisions to contribute additional amounts, and they were supported by co-payments from the coalition. We abolished tax being paid by retirees when and they withdrew their money from superannuation. Let's remember, it was taxed on the way into the fund. It was taxed in its earnings. What we wanted Australians to do was to benefit from the, that income at the end when they were drawing it out to support their own retirement. That was sound policy. That was policy that worked. Now the Gillard government's planning another tax increase in the May budget. And if they're elected again, they'll do it again. They'll do it again. After the 14th of September, if Labor creeps back, they'll do it again because they eye superannuation as a soft touch and self-managed super funds valued greater than the entire GDP in the Australian economy. They want to crack at that as well. They've already started. 
They've already started by putting new requirements on registering the auditors that are looking at it, and a fee. A fee's there, and we've yet to hear what the fee actually is, but they're ready to jack that up as well. There's been constraints on activity in self-managed super funds, and they describe this as all part of some kind of class war, where they're looking after low-income people and getting stuck into the rich. But when they ask what the rich person is, they seem pretty average Australians. Their income's not of some biblically huge amount. A modest income at a time when these households are facing cost of living pressures as well. And you look at superannuation, it's where the bulk of the Australian public, the vast majority, fund their retirement. You know, they're really super rich. They've got other avenues. The vast bulk of the Australian public use superannuation. So when you start messing with the super rules, you start moving those goalposts, it affects everybody. It certainly affects younger people who become more reluctant to contribute because they're uncertain about what's going to come next. They're not confident that the arrangement that they're entering into now will be the one that will be sustained throughout their working life. And that instability causes them to be less attracted to superannuation. For the mature age, they're worried about those cost of living pressures. And if you see another tax attack on them that eats not only into their retirement nest eggs but potentially into their income as well, they're getting this cost of living pressure coming at them and the government taking more of their retirement income capacity away from them. Con concessional tax treatment is an incentive. It's an encouragement. It's actually an investment in the future affordability of our three-pillar retirement income system, where you've got the age pension as an income support safety net. You've got the compulsory superannuation framework, something that all employers are contributing to, not, not as the government would have you believe. Remember that 9 to 12 per cent superannuation <laughs> contribution? And they sat there and said, you know, the mining tax is paying for that? You know, it, this, this may be one of the most cunning observations of my 17 years in this place, but employer-funded superannuation is funded by employers. employers. There you go. So that's funded by the employers while the government runs around as if some magic pudding of the mining tax is funding for that superannuation increase. And you hear the shadow treasurer. You hear the shadow treasurer and you perisher the thought that it was coming from somewhere else, but employer-funded super comes from employers. So, and what happens there? The government actually gets tax out of that contribution. So rather than say they're generating, you know, they're paying for it out of the mining tax, they're actually grabbing a chunk out of it. So as every small business is paying more into superannuation, the, the government's there getting a clip on the way through. So it's actually a revenue run for them. So this is quite bizarre. So, so that's part of our system. And then there's the voluntary system where people are encouraged to apply themselves and to make choices about their discretionary income to provide in a more, more accommodating way for their retirement. So what you've got is a rather stark and vivid choice. You've got more of this uncertainty, more of this lack of longer term perspective. More of this the monotonous minister, nonsense from the assistant well, treasurer. No, no, the He'll throw a cold pie at me if I keep going, but I will persevere because this is significant for all Australians that are either saving for superannuation, anticipating being able to rely upon it, or wondering how they're going to finance their own retirement. And I again come back to those small businesses. We are knowing that small businesses are knowing a lot about superannuation. They're having to pay for the increase. Yeah, they are. Now, now. It was interesting, wasn't it? The Henry Tax Review recommended against lifting that employer contribution. They actually said, be a bit smarter with the way you tax the contributions and the earnings in the fund and you'll achieve adequacy. Well, no, you wouldn't have that from yeah. Labor. They thought, he's never missed a chance to have a go and a gouge at a small business. So they've introduced this. Now, we voted against it, saying there's better ways of dealing with this, but now that it's in, in the name of certainty, predictability and stability, we've undertaken not to rescind it. Because that's the confidence that people are looking for. A competent government provides certainty and it provides continuity. And we've done that, even though it was an unnecessary move. We've even got this government saying to small businesses that, you know, self-managed super funds, you might have one of those. Well, we're not sure about that either. That sounds like a lurk. That sounds like a lurk we can't get our hands into. They've tried to structure the, the superannuation industry rather than enhance competition and improve the options available to people. They've structured it so those union-dominated industry funds, what a, what a dream run they've got. What a dream run they've got. And all of those that are, that are living off the industry super funds, those that Labor have loved for so long, that have now saying, please don't keep messing 
with this superannuation arrangement. I have a very strong, very strong commitment that I'd like to see from the government. If you're going to break another promise, another promise about superannuation, if you can't maintain this assurance of not messing with it, please at least take it to the Australian public. This is too important for this short-termism, self-serving, self-interested government to mess with people's longer-term planning requirements for their retirement, those approaching retirement relying on their superannuation. The right thing to do is follow the coalition's lead. Offer stability. Be clear. No surprises. But if you can't manage that, the Gillard government should at least face the Australian Order. public the so they know the what they're doing and people expired. can make their own judgment.